We do begin this morning with the war in Ukraine. Russia launching a barrage of missiles overnight across Ukraine. Power knocked out, innocent civilians killed. It is the largest scale bombardment we have seen in nearly a month. The Russians struck several major cities, including the capital Kyiv, far away from the front lines. Ukrainian officials say a Russian missile obliterated these homes and killed at least five people in the western city of Lviv, which is right on NATO's doorstep. This is a photo of Russian missiles rising up into the sky. In the pre-dawn hours, Ukraine's military says Russia launched more than 80 missiles in all. And Europe's largest nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia has been completely disconnected now from Ukraine's power grid because of that Russian shelling. That's according to the energy company that runs it. So we do begin with our Ivan Watson. He is live on the ground in Kyiv. Just a barrage overnight and so far west. What can you tell us? Good morning, Poppy. And according to the Ukrainian uh, military command, this was a massive missile attack on Ukraine's critical infrastructure. And I'm just going to give you a little uh, image of some of the consequences of this. The security source in Ukraine says that this was a piece of a missile that burned out these cars. Uh, it hit around 6 o'clock this morning before dawn and would have been absolutely terrifying the blast for uh, residents of this enormous apartment block up here. There are shattered windows and things like that. This is just one of the impact points. Uh, it does appear, judging by what the Ukrainian military has said, that this was a coordinated Russian uh, missile attack. At least 81 missiles of different kinds, cruise missiles, air-launched missiles, uh, uh, sea-launched missiles as well, uh, those uh, Iranian-made Shahid drones that hit in cities from uh, Kiev here, the capital, to Lviv in the west, where at least five people were reported killed. Uh, the southern city of Odessa, uh, the northern uh, city of Kharkiv, and that the uh, power infrastructure appears to have been one of the targets of these strikes. And that is uh, a trend that we have seen for months now, with Russia apparently trying to knock out power uh, in this country. And 15 percent of power was, for example, knocked out here in Kyiv. Uh, in uh, another town, Zhitomir, about 150,000 people without electricity. But I can just describe to you, traveling around Kyiv today, it's business as usual. Uh, the restaurants are open. Businesses are open as well. But I think what we see here just underscores how haphazard and dangerous and scary uh, it is when uh, the Russians fire these missiles. Uh, Tom's just going to spin around over here real fast. I mean, there's a there's a children's playground right here. Fortunately, no kids would have been here at six o'clock in the morning. The Ukrainian military says that they were able to use their air defense to knock down at least 34 four of the cruise missiles and four of those uh, Iranian-made Shahid uh, so-called suicide drones. Uh, but take a listen to what a spokesperson for uh, Ukraine's Air Force has to say about the vulnerability they have to some of these Russian missiles. As you can see, the attack is really large scale and for the first time using such different types of missiles. We see that this time as many as six Kinza were used. This is an attack like I don't remember seeing before. Different types of aircraft were used, strategic, long range, MiG-31. There were 81 missile launches. There were X-22, which we can't shoot down. We can't shoot down the Kinza either. Uh, as he says, they have no defenses against some of these uh, Russian missiles. Back to you, Poppy. Ivan, before you go, I mean, it, we just heard from the director of national intelligence, Avril Haines, testifying before Congress yesterday, talking about uh, real concerns about Russia unlikely to make major gains, but to continue this war of attrition, to continue killing civilians, to continue trying to make this impossible for Ukraine to live through, and also real concerns about, you know, Ukraine's efforts in a counteroffensive. And it's, you're seeing that play out on the ground right now. Yeah, I mean, well, let's just consider this this missile barrage. What does it accomplish? Mm -hmm. The power is still on in much of Ukraine. This is just the most recent of a, a series of these kind of missile attacks. To, so what does it really accomplish? It, it you know, keeps the air defenses active. Uh, it definitely terrifies local people. I was talking to an, an elderly lady who walked past and she, she said, I have no words for how frightening it was at six o'clock in the morning when uh, this missile part smashed down here. Uh, uh, but 
to date, the, the Russian military has not been able to knock out the electricity in Ukraine. Despite the scale of the destruction and the battle that's been going on, they have not succeeded in this, though they try again and again and again. I leave that to you to judge how effective this strategy is, unless it is to uh, terrify the terrorize. population and try to hobble the economy here. Yeah, terrify and terrorize, and it's so striking to see you right uh, in front of the children's playground there where it's all playing out. Ivan, thank you for the reporting. Joining us now this morning, senior military analyst and former member of the Joint Staff at the Pentagon, retired Colonel Cedric Layton. Uh, Colonel, thank you for joining us this morning. Let's talk about the scale of this attack. It really spans the full interior of Ukraine. Talk about uh, where these strikes hit and why Russia chose these particular targets. Yeah, Don, good morning. Well, uh, you know, as Ivan mentioned in his report, it really struck all across Ukraine. And you can see from the west in Lviv all the way to the northeast in Kharkiv and then down south in Odessa, uh, plus, of course, the capital in Kyiv. Uh, all of these areas are critical to Ukraine from an economic standpoint. Uh, many of them do not have military installations, but the very fact that they're being hit uh, indicates that the Russian strategy is one in which they're going after all the different different civilian infrastructure installations that they can hit. Uh, you know, the key fact, of course, they're going after power, uh, not very effective, as Ivan mentioned, in, you know, in the aggregate, but it's still, a, you know, at the very least an inconvenience and, of course, can be a fatal inconvenience uh, when these missiles strike in, a, in apartment areas and uh, in other ha inhabited areas. Well, let's talk about Lviv. I remember being there, and Lviv was seen to be as, you know, a safe space here. This is one of the five areas there. So this is a residential area, thought to be a safe space. Why why would Russia strike there? So the reason for that, Don, besides spreading terror and really indicating to Ukrainians that there is no safe haven, uh, notice how close Lviv is to the Polish border. Uh, Lviv is the main supply route in for a lot of the weapons that NATO and the U.S. Uh, are supplying to the Ukrainians. Uh, so it's a warning in some respects to Ukraine that their supply chain can be hit uh, by the Russians. And uh, Lviv, of course, is right smack in the middle of that. All right, let's look at now the Zaporizhia nuclear uh, power plant. The state of emergency, uh, this, this company says that the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant has once again been completely disconnected. It's an emergency for them. It's been disconnected from the Ukrainian power grid due to Russian shelling. That continues to be a major concern here. Yeah, it sure does, Don. And of course, you know, if uh, there is no power to the nuclear power plant, that limits the ability and actually makes it impossible to cool the reactor. Uh, so if the reactor is not cooled, then uh, the possibility exists of a, a nuclear accident uh, of one type or another. And, you know, to use the term accident is probably overstating things, but uh, it is definitely uh, a serious concern and could result in some radiation uh, leaving the area kind of like Fukushima uh, in, uh, in Japan a, a few years ago. This isn't your expertise. We've been discussing, you and I, uh, and you with other members of our network have been talking about the, the, the types of weapons that Russia is using here in these strikes, including uh, cruise missiles, anti-aircraft missiles. What do you know about it? Yeah, so there are a lot of different weapon systems, as the Ukrainian spokesman mentioned. Uh, there are a lot of them. So let's uh, look into a, a couple of these, the X-22 air launch cruise missile. This is something that is designed by the Russians to go after ships. Uh, this is something that is not designed to attack civilian targets. It is not designed to even attack formations on the ground. Uh, but that is, you know, one of the key things. And then right under that, the X-47 Kinshal, that's an air launch cruise missile. Uh, it is a hyper sonic missile can travel up to 12 times the speed of sound. Uh, and it is also, uh, actually both of these missiles are actually nuclear capable. Now they don't have nuclear warheads in this case, uh, but uh, the conventional warheads have caused a lot of damage and the Ukrainians have no air defenses against them.